Here are five simple steps on how to be a great programmer. Number one, don't duplicate your code. Use variables and functions as often as possible. Take this code for example. In this code, we repeatedly print the result of several math problems using the number seven in each of them. But what if you later discover you should have used three rather than seven? Now you have to change it in every place that you use seven. In this example, it is not too difficult to change. But what if you had used seven hundreds of times in this code and had to change each one? This is where variables come in handy. If we replaced every seven with the variable fav number, we would still get the same result. And now, if we find out that we must change it, all we have to do is change the value of the variable one time, and it changes everywhere. Or take this code as an example. In this code, we repeatedly compare two numbers, spit out some text, then add a random number to each one. This is tedious and adds a lot of lines to our code. There must be a better way, right? Well, there is. This is what methods, which are also known as functions, are for. They help us to be able to use the same code over and over without rewriting it each and every time. Take a look at what our code can look like after moving this process into a method and calling it the same number of times as we used to be repeating it. It does the same thing, but it is much easier to read. Step 2. Name your variables and functions meaningfully. Here's a great example. You're working with a team of programmers to develop an application. One of your team members has been working on this code file for a few days and you're going to go look at it and see what else needs to be done. But as you're reading the code to try to figure out what it does, you're baffled. The variables and methods are named so outrageously that you're not even sure if what you're reading will work at all. And if it did work, you wouldn't know what any line of code did unless you spent hours memorizing what everything did in itself. This is why it is always a good idea to name your functions and variables meaningfully. Meaningful names make it much easier for other programmers, or even yourself, to go through your code at a later date and make changes or additions, because then they understand exactly what everything means. Let's see if this code makes more sense now that we've changed some names around. See how much better that is? Step 3. Plan everything before you start. A very important tip to programming is to make sure you know what you're doing before you get started. What if you were chugging along, writing some code, then suddenly thought to yourself, wait, what happens next? You then realize that you've forgotten several steps and you must practically start from the very beginning. Wouldn't it be easier to just think it through, then write your code? Yes. Step 4. Make detailed comments. Comments are a great idea, especially when working in a team. Sometimes, even meaningful variable and function names aren't enough. Sometimes, it helps to just have plain English for others to read. Let's take our code from earlier as an example. While it would make sense to just about everybody that had a good understanding of what the general purpose was, it would make almost no sense to somebody who just found this randomly on the internet. Let's make it more useful. See all those comments? You don't have to read them. But now, 
if you're confused, you don't have to figure out exactly what the code logic will do. It's already written out for you. Step 5. Add white space to your code. Last but most certainly not least is to make your code look nice. Code can be hard to read sometimes, even by professional programmers. This is especially true in long sets of code with several if statements and loops, but no indentations. Let's look at this piece of code and see if we can easily understand it. Notice how this code has meaningful names for its variables and methods and it even has comments. So then, why is this code so hard to read? It's because the code is all in one line and not properly spaced. Look how much nicer and easier to read the code is with just a bit of white space. Yet the computer understands it just as well. So there you have it. Five tips on how to be a great programmer. Utilize these five steps and you'll be well on your way to being the next Steve Jobs. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or dislike button corresponding to how you felt about this video. And I will catch you guys later.